He's a quiet assassin. He struck him out. What a collision. That ball is absolutely scorched. Clayton Kershaw been dialed in all night. Two, two series. We are heading to game five. For the Dodgers, Anderson has come down to this one game at Dodger Stadium with a spot in the NLCS riding on it. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. His best of five two, tied up at two games apiece. We got the Mets and the Dodgers on TBS. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Dodger Stadium. I'm Ernie Johnson, along with Cal Ripken and Ron Darling. Well, the Chicago Cubs are waiting in the wings, but here tonight you got the game one winner, Jacob deGrom, and the game two winner, Zach Greinke, head to head in game five. Boy, there's been some great pitching in this series. Zach Greinke was unbelievable in game two. Just two solo home runs he gave up. He had one of the finest seasons ever in Dodger franchise history. 19 wins, only lost three times, ERA 1.66. But the Mets are going to have to lay off that breaking ball if they're going to have any effectiveness against Greinke tonight. And on the other side, Jacob DeGrom was unbelievable in game one. 13 strikeouts, and for the offense of the Dodgers, they're going to have to lay off that high fastball, or they're going to have the same result. That does it for the arms. Let's talk about the bats. And in this series, Cal, there have been 60 hits. There have been 89 strikeouts so far. Give me a guy on each side who could be the difference maker offensively. Oh, okay, I got a couple. How about Daniel Murphy from the uh, New York Mets? This guy's hit a couple of home runs off of Clayton Kershaw. Here's the first one, a real quick big ball that gave them a quick early lead. And here's the second one right here. Now he swung the bat pretty good against uh, Greinke in, the t in his start as well. But I think the key part about where he sits in the order, he could drive in a key run, he could hit a home run, but he could set this table for Cespedes. On the other side, Adrian Gonzalez, he's got some big hits, including this big double that got them a win, got them, put him in the lead. Here's a home run against Cologne. But against DeGrom, DeGrom handled him pretty easy. Now he hits DeGrom pretty good, but he struck him out three times. There's gonna be an adjustment there. Can DeGrom pitch him as good as he did the first time? I think he has a chance to get a big hit. The Chicago Cubs have their bags packed. They just don't know where they're gonna fly on Friday morning, LA or New York. We're all gonna find that answer out later tonight, right here on TBS. First pitch, right around the bend. Beautiful Thursday evening at Chavez Ravine. And we got ourselves a game five in the National League Division Series between the Dodgers and the Mets. The Dodgers have taken the field 74 degrees. It was a partly cloudy day. A beautiful evening for game five. Tonight's batting order presented by T-Mobile. Curtis Granderson once again in the leadoff spot for the Mets, followed by David Wright, then Daniel Murphy. Joanna Cespedes in the cleanup spot. Lucas Duda hits in the fifth spot. Then Travis Darno, Michael Conforto, who homered here off of Greinke in game two. Wilmer Flores is the shortstop, and Jacob DeGrom does the pitching for the Mets. Well, I gave you all the stats in the open. Zach Greinke is really an artist with the baseball, able to paint for his seven-plus innings of work. But I'm going to give you this stat. As a Dodger here at Chavez Ravine, he's 30 and 5. Yeah, setting the defense for you behind Zach Greinke. Here he is on the hill pitching Yasmani Grandel behind the plate. Go around the infield up the middle, Corey Seager and Howie Kendrick. A little banged up Justin Turner made a great play at third base, and you got Adrian Gonzalez over there with his four gold gloves. Moving to the outfield, Jock Peterson out in center field with Kike Henderson and Andre Ethier out in right field. There's Curtis Granderson stepping to the plate to lead things off in decisive game five. That's the first one of these winner take all games for the Dodgers since 88. Mets went through one in 2006. Well, both these starters lead the world in great air, don't they? 
I can't comment on that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take the fifth on that one, too. <laughs> Here's the first pitch. And it's a strike to Granderson. Gary Cedarstrom is the home plate umpire. Granky gave up a couple of long balls in that game two to Cespedes and Conforto, but yielded nothing else to these New York Mets. It's almost like as soon as he gave up those two solo shots, he said, That's it, and he turned the tap off. That power changeup has really been the equalizer for him against left handed hitters. Granderson hitting 429 in the series, six out of 14. For you folks at home, Gary Cedarstrom, one of the best umpires in the league. He is one of those umpires, though, that's real conservative. He's not going to go off the strike zone, give you anything off the plate. The one two. Tap past Grinky. That's going to be a tough play, and he's able to make it. Justin Turner, the third baseman, over there in the shift, getting the speedy Granderson for the first out. Well, upon first look, it looked like it might have been a tie. They're deciding whether they want to go with the instant replay here. It looks like Granderson beats it on the, on the slow motion replay. They will put the headsets on. And right away a challenge here in game five. Think about it. That's twice now that that's happened with Granderson and Justin Turner as the main players. Turner tried to use his glove the last time to shovel at the first base and he was called out but was then called safe by the first base umpire Greg Gibson. This time he comes in and with the scoop tries to use his arm to get it there a little quicker. Well he gets his footwork set so he can catch it and throw at the same time. Gets it over there much quicker. But with the shift, and Greinke uh, dove for that ball because he knew that was in that no man's land where the first baseman, Adrian Gonzalez, can't go for it. He's the only one that can cover first base. And Turner made a valid effort. I wonder if Greinke, because he's such a great athlete, if he tipped that ball and slowed it down a little bit to make it an even tougher play on Justin Turner. He's safe at first. Chad Fairchild made the call at first. Terry Collins with the challenge. And it is reversed, and so Granderson is aboard. I always try to look at the runner. Sometimes you can trust him knowing whether he beat it or not. And Granderson was pretty sure he beat that. And that brings up David Wright. Wright's only got one hit in the series. It was a biggie in the opener. Knocked in two runs as the Mets took game one. He's one for 12 as he stands in against Greinke and swings and misses 0-1. Interesting, Terry Collins before the game talking about Wright said he's been really too much in pull mode in this series against Greinke. Most of the pitchers are going to be middle of plate away. He should go that way. Twice in game two, Greinke coaxed double play balls out of David Wright. Sometimes you get all uh, all riled up and you want to swing the bat and you want to hit a home run and the first thing that comes off is that front shoulder. Cannot do that to Zach Greinke. That little cutter and the control of the outside corner are too great. Greinke ahead 0-2 as he was against Granderson the leadoff hitter. Right, the Mets captain. One of two players in the series, Andre Ethier, the other, who played in that 2006 series. And Ethier, the starting right fielder tonight for Don Mattingly. No balls and two strikes. And Wright goes down swinging for out number one. Here's that cutter slider. It's got a little spin to it again. If you front pull the front side off of it, you can't reach out that far. You really got to dive in, keep the front shoulder in, 
just a perfect 0 2 pitch. We always talk about pitchers having control in the strike zone. We never talk about those guys who have control outside of the strike zone. Granky's the best. Now, Cal, you talked about the guy at the plate now as we came on the air today as a potential difference maker for the Mets in this one against Granky. It's Daniel Murphy. He's just looked good to me standing up there taking pitches away seems like he's locked in hit a couple of home runs it's very difficult to hit a home run off of Kershaw if you're left handed and he's got two and he's not a home run hitter only had 14 this year even though that was a career high. Granderson with a lead at first. The 1 0. Murphy lays off again two balls and no strikes. And I also was talking about setting the table. Pulling the ball through that hole will send Granderson to third. Our Chevrolet pitch tracks on Zach Greinke. Usually against Greinke, if you're a left-handed hitter, you will not get a fastball 2-0. He likes to throw the breaking ball or the changeup. To left center field, pretty well hit. Jock Peterson goes back. That's off the wall. Granderson is around third. He's going to score easily. And all the way into third comes Daniel Murphy and the Mets are on the board here in the first. They're loving that at McFadden's in New York. They're going to give him a triple, though it sure looked mm. like a double and a boot out there that yeah. allowed Murphy to go from second to third. It's almost isn't fair facing Cespedes and having the infield come in. And Cal, to your point, so here's a, an instance where Murphy not only knocked in a run, now he set up Cespedes to drive in another. Big cut came up empty 0 and 1. Good hustle all the way around. Granderson read it really well got a good jump. He was going to score easy from first base. Daniel Murphy kept running keeping his eye on the ball. And when Hernandez couldn't come up with it. He just kept on going to third. Murphy. I do agree. Double yeah. and an error. Murphy's fourth RBI of the series and puts the Mets on top early. <laughs> 0 and 2 to the Mets cleanup hitter. And it was a uh, hard change up, up out over the plate. Murphy drove it to the left center field gap. And here it is. Up missed it once, missed it twice. And this allowed Murphy to turn that double into a triple and put himself in scoring position for Cespedes. The 0 2. Big strikeout for Zach Cranky. Second out of the inning. Boy, he did not even fool around with Cespedes. Two fastballs away, and then a fastball up and in. If there's an Achilles heel for Cespedes, that is the pitch. Well, that's the book. Uh, Greinke knows when he needs a strikeout right here, he knows exactly where to go on Cespedes. It is up in the strike zone with 95. Really good low ball hitter. You can't quite catch up to that one. Here's Lucas Duda. Two for 15, nine strikeouts in this series. We well, got a runner at third and one out, and Cespedes at the plate. You figure sacrifice fly very much in the equation there, but Brinky able to sit him down. And so Murphy's still out there with two away. Well, that's what Grinky does. He minimizes any of these potential innings. He's given up one. Looks like there was potentially two out there. And he's got himself in a position to get out with only one. Dodgers with that shift. Sorry about that, Ron, but you, you got Howie Kendrick yeah. well into right field in the shift. Three Mets Dodgers on the right side. <laughs> Mets in this series. 400 with two outs and runners in scoring position. Two balls, one strike to the Mets' first baseman. And here it comes. 
three and one. I wouldn't say that this is a pitch around, but it really seems to me that it doesn't matter. Lucas Duda is such a, a, a behemoth in the box that sometimes you just don't want to go after him if you get behind him. So you can pitch around him if you have to. Darno, the right hander on deck. We're pretty much guaranteed a split here or a, or a power change. Three balls and two strikes. I call it a split because it acts like a split. Yeah. And it's more about power change up 91 miles an hour. A change up off the fastball normally is about 10 miles an hour. With Zach, it's only about four or five. Branky trying to limit the damage here in the first. Mets have a run in. And Murphy at third. Here it comes. And Duda strikes out for the tenth time in this series. The Mets strand a runner at third, but they score one in the first off Grinky. The Dodgers batting order is presented by T-Mobile. Howie Kendrick leads it off. Corey Seager in the two hole, then Adrian Gonzalez. Justin Turner having a great series. Hits cleanup. Then it's Ethier, Grandal. T.K. Hernandez, the left fielder, Jock Peterson in center, and Zach Greinke doing the pitching and batting ninth. Jacob DeGrom on the mound for New York. And there's a strike to Kendrick. This young man has a flair for the dramatic. Rookie of the year last year in the All-Star game this year. Three punch-outs on ten pitches and 13 punch-outs in the first game. You know, Terry Collins told us after game one that you know a couple innings in he had to kind of get to Grom to settle down. Do you think having done that now having pitched because that's line to do for the first out having been there been in this ballpark now pitched in the playoff game. Will it be the same kind of feel for him tonight. I, I think that he'll have a little more wrap around his emotions. But remember this is a winner take all game. It still is going to produce a lot of adrenaline. And it really helps when you hit the ball in the nose right at your fielder. Well, what about getting a one run lead for him, too? Coming Big out. time. Here's Corey Seeger. Seeger, the 21 year old, came up in September with an immediate impact. He's two for 12 in this series and has struck out five times. He had a hit off to Grom in the opener. It was a ground rule double right along the line in left field. A ball that Michael Kadire had some trouble with out there. But Mets pitching has pretty much held Seeger in check. He goes the other way. Base hit left. Conforto hustles it in. And Corey Seeger, nice piece of hitting. Aboard with one down here in the bottom of the first. The two batters and two rockets off the bat. Lucky enough, one is a now. This is a fastball up over the plate. Seeger stays on top of it and rifles it to left field. That's two fastballs that have been hit right on the nose so far early. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. First time he faced him in this series, it was the took the hat trick against DeGrom. He struck out three times before delivering off Baez out of the bullpen. I think you're going to start to see the use of some of his uh, secondary pitches. This is a 1 0, 97 five mile an hour fastball. He had a great pass at it right there. More than likely to see a change up or a breaking ball here. Didn't really start using his change up probably to the third inning last time around. 
because he got over the adrenaline phase where he's just pumping fastballs. The 1 1. One of the most intelligent hitters around. 2 1 count. I think DeGrom will counter with a change up here. I haven't seen him throw one yet, but he has been known to throw him in the 2 1, 3 2 counts. Had a notion, laid off. 3 and 1. Told you before, Gary Cedars from behind the plate. He's not going to give you anything, just slightly off the plate. You got to catch that corner. So pretty sure this is going to be a fastball. <laughs> After seeing all the sequence up to this point, just missed on the outside. Shook to a three. Well hit the right field. Seeger around second. He's going to be at third. They're at the corners with one down. This is a 3-1 hanging slider, so it makes it just a mediocre fastball, 91 down the middle. He sends it down the right field. Granderson makes a good job of going over, cutting it off, and holding Adrian to a single. The toughest part sometimes is when you face the team in rapid succession like DeGrom and Granke are doing. Sometimes you double think and say to yourself, boy, I was throwing the fastball by him in the first game. I'm going to have to try to trick him in the second game. He tried to trick him, and it hurt him. But if you want to trick him, I still think the changeup is a better pitch than the breaking ball coming into a left-hander. Here's Justin Turner, who was two for three off the Grom in the opener. Turner seven for 15 in the series. He's knocked in three runs. You got the tying run 90 feet away. Adrian Gonzalez is asking for noise as he leads off first. Turner guessing fastball. He got the slider from DeGrom. Turner in this series, and I wouldn't have guessed it, hits by zone. So all seven hits have been up in the strike zone, either hanging, uh, breaking, breaking pitches, or the high fastball. Rounded just foul past third. Yeah, three on the inside part and four up and away. I can remember a couple balls driven to right center field. He's quick on the fastball, but also hangs in there too on the breaking ball. DeGrom with the one two that's in the right field that's going to get down for a base hit and this game is tied. pitch for the first hit that's not up in the strike zone a breaking ball that stays down Turner goes down and gets it and shoots at the right field to drive in a run as opposed to the first game when DeGrom just came out firing bullets and threw it right by the Dodgers he's trying to trick him here in this first inning maybe he doesn't like his fastball but he's paying for it so far Dodgers again first and third with the game tied now and here is Andre Ethier There's a strike 0 and 1. Turner at first now hitting an even 500 for the series. He's 8 for 16. Ethier doesn't have a lot to show for it, but he's taken some of the best at bats for the Dodgers in this entire series. Change of grip. 
DeGrom behind his back. A little blooper. Flores can't get there. Gonzalez trots home. It is two to one. Sometimes it's where you hit it, not how hard you hit it. The first four balls off it have been hit really, really hard. That one wasn't, but still has the same result on your scoreboard. Clayton Kershaw, who kept the Dodgers afloat in game four, digging it. You know, it's interesting about here with all the infielders huddled around the pitcher. Worth and shouting instructions because of the noise here at Chavez Ravine. It's almost like a group effort. Hey, we got your back. You can get out of this inning. We hardly saw Dan Worthen in game one. But a yeah. first inning visit here with DeGrom. Yeah, talking to Terry Collins, I asked him, is, did you go over hypotheticals going into this game, what you might do? This hypothetical, I'm sure, hasn't crossed his mind. Yasmani Grandal at the plate. He's five for his last 92. He bats with runners at first and second, and one down. Nowhere close. One and zero. He's one for 23 with runners in scoring position. That one hit came in game two. He has a couple of runs batted in, and he's got two Dodgers out there with one out. Rondall is bothered by a left shoulder injury, which doesn't affect him defensively, but he does feel it at the plate. Probably going to have surgery in the offseason. Probably one of the biggest reasons for all those numbers that we've been giving you. Rondall, usually an excellent hitter. Sails outside again, two balls and a strike. Huh, Cal? All we saw were blazing fastballs from DeGrom in the first three innings. Just the opposite here in the first. That's the first changeup that I've seen. We've seen a slow curveball, 84 miles an hour, if you call that slow. That's the first changeup he's broke out. His fastball command is just not there, nor is the same velocity as in the first game. Count even two balls and two strikes. DeGrom gave up five hits in seven innings of work in game one. He's given up four straight hits here in the bottom half of the first. You know, it's interesting. Mattingly said that, too. Look, we could be getting used to velocity because that's what they have. They bring velocity at us. And the second time around, the velocity, the shortness of the swing, it does help the hitters a little bit. He's run the count full, three and two. Ernie, it reminds me a little of game three when Harvey gave up three runs and the Mets came right back and scored four. Well, the same for the Dodgers here. Quick answer. So Granke minimized in his inning. Can DeGrom do it right here? And Grandal strikes out for out number two. So DeGrom wins that battle at 98 miles an hour. Here's some of that velocity that we saw in game one. A little hop, a little jump on this 98 mile an hour fastball. Can't quite catch up to it. And here's the left fielder, T.K. Hernandez. This will be pitch number 25 from Jacob DeGrom here in the bottom half of the first. Line drive foul. Well, like most good pitchers, we showed you the graphic before. DeGrom only allowed 59 runs all season long, but 16 came in the first inning. Two here tonight. Terry Collins Mets scoring in the top half. Dodgers answering to this point with two in the bottom. 
The guys with the RBIs, Turner and Ethier, are your base runners. Here's the pitch. Tried to hold up, could not 0-2. He pulled a hanging slider foul, I believe, down the line, and he comes back with a good slider right there at 91. Can't lay off of it. At 97, strike three to Hernandez. But the Dodgers have an answer. They score two in the bottom of the first in game five. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Top half of the second. Action packed start to this one, game five, <laughs> between the Mets and the Dodgers. Mets score one in the first. Dodgers answer with two on four straight hits off to Grom in the bottom half. Travis Darno is three for 16 in the series, with a homer and three runs batted in. A couple of good swings. Looks like a good approach. He looked like he was staying on it to go to right center. A little deceptive in those numbers, though, because all of those hits came in one ball game for Darno. That was the ball game not started by a Kershaw <laughs> or a Granke. That's the one outlier in this series was that 13 to 7 game. Everything else been tough and tight. Couple of 3 1 finals. Runs at a premium, hits at a premium, strikeouts galore. And great starting pitching by and large for both sides. Grinky strikes out Darno here in the second. Sam Ryan on the field again tonight. Sammy, how are you? I'm great, Ernie. Well, Justin Turner made with the first RBI for the Dodgers in this one. He's at third base now. You mentioned earlier he's playing a little banged up. He has a bum knee. This is something he suffered earlier in the season, but re-aggravated it Tuesday in game four, making a diving stop in the seventh inning. He told me that the day off yesterday was very beneficial to him. He was able to ice it most of the day and rest it. He said it's a deep bone bruise, so there's not much you can do. Just play through it, guys. All right, thank you, Sam. No sympathy by number eight up here, by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Turner, in fact, would even say, hey, look, it's still attached. I'm good. There was never a doubt he was going to be in the lineup. Michael Conforto watches that one outside. It's a ball and a strike. He's one of the guys who took Grinky deep in game two. Just a line drive that dented the foul pole and right. It was a fastball inside. It'll be interesting to see if Conforto gets any of those fastballs again. That's it to right. Ethier over. And Ethier makes a sliding catch. Knocks in a run in the bottom half of the first. And here's one of those fastballs. He did get inside. Didn't get all of it, but hit it pretty good down the line. And Ethier covers a lot of ground here. Gives up his body. On the warning track to make a catch. Nice, nice play. Putting a blue star in the scorebook next to that one. So is Kike Hernandez. Well, this place buzzing. Here's Wilmer Flores. Flores is three out of eight against Grinky. You rattled off a lot of impressive numbers about uh, about Zach Grinky, and 
what was it 30 and 5 in this ballpark yes as a Dodger 19 and 0 when he's given a lead this season he leads 2 1. Well because of the power that Flores has shown all year Greinke being very careful with Flores who's in the eighth spot in front of the pitcher DeGrom. Three balls and a strike. Flores of course starting the last two games of this series after what happened here in game two and the Chase Utley situation with Ruben Tejada who suffered a broken leg and near collision. Flores follows it back to the screen and the count full. You wondered with the early start time out here five o'clock in Los Angeles. If that would affect the early crowd. Uh uh. Strikeout number five for Zach Greinke. We're in the middle of the second. The ALCS starts on Friday night on Fox. Blue Jays and Royals. FS1's got game two on Saturday afternoon. We've got game one of the NLCS Saturday night Cubs will be either here at Dodger Stadium or at City Field. Jock Peterson leads it off takes a ball from Jacob DeGrom. Peterson had that electric first half of the season with the 20 home runs cooled off in the second half. Made the all star team. We asked Don Mattingly, why is he in the lineup? He goes better defense and he can run into one occasionally. Carl Crawford started the first three games, struggled at the plate, did not play game four, is not in the lineup in game five. Peterson waits on a 2 1. Guys with the ALCS starting on Friday night. See, have you seen anything like that seventh inning? No. <laughs> In Toronto yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Almost an hour long. 3 and 2 to Peterson. Yeah, Started there. with a bat tick, ended with a bat flip. And in between three boots. <laughs> you guys are speaking another language to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> three balls, two strikes. Here it comes. And Peterson walks to lead off the bottom of the second. Hey, we've got our stat cast powered by Amazon Web Services tracking Andre Ethier with that. Sliding catch in the top half of the inning. Well, I like that stat on the first step. That means he got a great read, took a great route. Only way he could have caught that baseball. First walk issued by DeGrom, who walked only one in seven innings of work in the opener. Here's Granky already squaring to Bunton, try to get Peterson to second. Lays it down. Duda thought about it and then thought better of it. Sacrifice accomplished. 3-4. Jock Peterson got a heck of a jump right there. Good secondary. He goes right away. I thought there was a play at second possibly, but once you look up, no. Nope. Take the sure out at first base. That was a good decision by Duda. And like you said, Peterson does not get a good jump. That's an out at second base. Good decision. Top of the Dodger order now, and Howie Kendrick, who lined the first his first time. On the ground to short. Flores throws high, and he's safe. 
Duda had to come off the bag to flag it down. Peterson stayed at second. Well, these are a lot of the plays that Wilmer Flores made in the first half of the season. Going into the hole, he's always had a hard time making that accurate throw. When he first started, first couple of games after Tejada was injured, he looked very good in the hole. That's what you saw in the first half, if you were a Mets fan. Yeah, he rushed that throw a little bit because Kendrick's speed. You saw Kendrick touch the front part of the bag with some fancy footwork. So a walk, a sacrifice, and an E6 has him at first and second with one out. Corey Seager singled his first time, took the ball the other way. And he scored the first Dodger run. Seager came up in September, played under 30 games. Four homers, 17 runs batted in. And pretty much muscled his way into Don Mattingly's lineup. With some slick, slick defense. And of course, a 337 average in that month. All these great pitchers, Kershaw, Greinke, and the young arms of the Mets, it's all predicated off fastball command. So far, DeGrom does not have it. Peterson at second, Kendrick at first. And the 2-0 to Seeger. Three balls and no strikes. Adrian Gonzalez waiting on deck. Foul back three and one swinging. Is that even allowed under the rules to be that young and swing 3 0? Oh, I was just wondering, there's no way in the world they're going to get a 3 0 here. He's going to take the pitch. No, he, was going, he was going for everything. You see Noah Syndergaard up. He was the game two starter. 3 and 2. Boy, it's interesting that that would be his first choice with men on base. You would think you'd want a more traditional reliever, a guy who knows how to come in with people on base. Not a guy who's only started in the professional ranks. He looks like he's getting ready like a starter. <laughs> Relievers want to jump up there and start throwing one after the other. Looks like he's pacing himself and getting ready. So maybe he's not intended for, for this inning per se, but you might need him. Terry Collins has seen Jacob DeGrom throw 41 pitches. And we're only in the bottom half of the second. He strikes out Seeger for out number two. What a changeup! What a pitch right there. See the release coming out of his fingers. Tire hand on that ball and turns that ball over and takes about 10 miles an hour off. That's what he had success with. That's what he had control with, along with the fastball in game number one. That's an effective pitch for him to find. A compliment to that fastball. Here's Adrian Gonzalez who singled and scored in the first. And in this series with two outs and runners in scoring position, he's three for five. The theme of the theme of Gonzalez and the rest of the Dodgers in that first game against the Grom was swing and miss. Tonight is swing and barely miss. They're on that fastball much better. The 0 1. And he jumps out ahead. No balls and two strikes. 
All right, this would be huge for DeGrom to get out of this with no damage. Gonzalez lets the ball get deep and is comfortable hitting the ball left center field of fastball, especially a guy that throws hard. But in RBI situations, he seems to make a point to try to cover that fastball to left center field, which puts him on time for the off speed pitches. And he has tremendous pop that way also. Pulled the string on Agon. And back to back strikeouts to end the second. Still a 2 1 game as we head to the third. <laughs> 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T Mobile. Dodger Stadium here in Los Angeles on a beautiful Thursday evening for game five. And Jacob DeGrom will lead it off against Zach Grinke. A little nice match up here with Grinke against DeGrom. It's almost like he's facing his counterpart. They're both the same kind of pitcher. Very effective, great athletes, great fielders, and also can hit. DeGrom had 11 hits and 59 at bats in the regular season. Was 0 for 2 with a strikeout when he pitched game one. Ran it inside. 0 and 2. When that pitch tracks, it looks like you don't have to throw it over the plate. Ball outside on the first swing, he chases it and then comes way inside. He gets a swing on that as well. If you're going to cover that plate, that's a pretty wide plate. Well, even DeGrom with the open stance, he likes the ball the middle of the plate away. He doesn't like the ball in. There's the stance. Curtis Granderson and the top of the Mets order on deck. And Frankie's not pitching to him like he's a pitcher. <laughs> The 2 2. The ground knocked in four runs. Did not homer this season. But you think you, you think he's hitterish, Cal? <laughs> yeah, he looks hitterish. <laughs> Takes a good swing. He expanded the strike zone on the first two strikes, but now he's kind of got back looking for a good pitch to hit. Well, the Grom working cranky here into a 3 2 count. Think fastball, Ronnie? You think he's going to go? You got to challenge him. Fastball away. On the ground a second. Howie Kendrick gobbles it up. One down. Six man umpiring crew. In this. Playoff game, and we got Gary Cedarstrom behind the plate. Chad Fairchild at first, Alan Porter at second, and Jim Wolf at third. Greg Gibson making the calls down the left field line, and Chris Guccione on the right field line. Now here's Granderson, who hit a slow roller towards second his first time. Justin Turner who's over there in the shift charged and tried to get him tough play it was originally called out Terry Collins challenged it it was reversed but see where Turner's playing now he's playing on the grass he's moved in two or three steps to try to take that play away I personally wouldn't do that that's just a lucky play you hit the ball off the end of the bat you want to be back give yourself enough opportunity to catch something in case Curtis hits it on the nose. A ball and a strike. Here it comes on the ground. The first Gonzalez with the flip to Grinky. Two up and two down. Official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. 
You know they have stats for everything. <laughs> Do they ever? But, but if you're playing a shift, I wonder what the stats are to try to defend against the full swing bunt. <laughs> Because that's what you're really saying that's in right. the last uh, one. And Granderson does not pull it with him that's right. very often. So it's a rarity for him to smother a ball to get it over there. So I wouldn't set my defense to try to defend against that play. David Wright struck out his first time. And takes a strike on one. Playoff series, you get off to a slow start. It just seems like you can't recover. Yeah, he's one for 13 now. I guess it's just like the regular season, Cal. You can't think about getting three hits in a game. You just got to get a hit and it's at bat. Yeah. Go from there. Your best approach is right now, <laughs> pitch by pitch. Don't worry about what's happened. Two and one. When it clicks, it clicks. So you work on something in the cage, you try to find something, you apply it out here on the field. And once it starts to go right, sometimes it's a bleeder, sometimes it's a blooper, sometimes it's a line out to someone. Then you know it feels good. Then you try to stick with that. Three straight sliders away and comes back in with a fastball to counter a 2-1. Nice pitching by Granke. If you're David Wright, you don't worry about that one. That's a tough one to hit. That's not the one you want to hit. It's good to take that pitch. Going back away again. Well, nice try by Grandal, who tried to frame that ball and full Cedarstrom. Didn't work. Tried to push it back to the outside <laughs> corner, didn't he? He's good at receiving or presenting the ball to the umpire. Payoff pitch. Strikeout number six for Zach Greinke. One, two, three for the second straight frame. Let's take a look at tonight's Playmakers presented by Chrysler. Well, the Cubs are watching this one because they get the winner. And among the playmakers, look at Kyle Schwarber, Dexter Fowler, Jorge Soler, Javier Baez. Baez, you'll see a lot of him in the upcoming National League Championship Series with the injury to Addison Russell. He's out. But that's how that Cubs team is going. Russell goes down, Baez comes in. He only goes four for five. How rare is it you see four Cubs on a graphic of playmakers this year and Chris Bryant's not there. Or Anthony Rizzo. Justin Turner leading off here in the third, and that's a double off of the ground. Well, the Mets had Turner for all those seasons, but they must not have kept the book on him while he was playing for him because he is wearing them out. And just another double. It's either a near double or it is a double. He's swinging the bat exceptionally well. Hitting the ball all across the field. Right field line, left field line, both gaps. He is 9 for 17 in the series. And here's Ethier, Ethier who knocked in a run his first time. Situational hitting Cal walk us to this at bat. Yeah, I was just thinking that? some philosophies are different. I'm trying to sit up here and figure out. I was watching Ron Renneke. Uh, sometimes you'll get an indication from the third base coach and what they want you to do. Either drive him in, try to drive him in, or take a shot at pulling the ball. Against 97, 98 on the outside edge, it's going to be a little hard. Mm -hmm. But a productive out or situational hitting, pull the ball to the right side. Move Turner from second to third, put him in scoring position with less than two out. It's almost like you're doing Ethier a favor if you throw him a changeup, something easier to pull. Turner with the lead at second. Here comes the 1 1. It's the squibber over there to Ron Renneke. 1 and 2. 
So the Dodgers have already matched their hit total from game one against DeGrom with five. Four of those came consecutively in the first when the Dodgers scored twice to erase a one nothing Mets lead. Here comes the one two. Slapped into left. And Conforto makes the play one down. That was good pitching by DeGrom. He just kept the ball away, popped it in one time. That's when you saw that little squibbler towards Renneke. One time in, then went back away. There was nothing that Easier could do except hit the ball to left field. Here's the catcher, Yasmani Grandal. Struck out his first time. Bats now with a runner at second and one down. And he takes the low and away, 1 0. You can see that motion by DeGrom. He kind of put his arm out, like, get out in front on that slider. He's got four pitches fastball, curveball, slider, and change. The slider, uh, he was overthrowing it, kind of a mediocre fastball down the middle. He's got all arms and legs come at you, long arm action. And usually when you have that arm action, if you're off with your breaking pitches, it's tough to get it back right away. It takes a few pitches. Five hits in his last 93 ABs, and there goes the runner to third. There's the throw, and how about Justin Turner? That's heads up. Swipes third with one out. Justin Turner was asked, does he take any pleasure in getting these hits against the Mets? Great lead. He said he doesn't. I think he does. He took a walking lead, and many times the pitchers will fall into a pattern of looking once and then turning back around. He he started running when the ground turned his head back to home plate, got an excellent jump, and stole third. Mets bring the infield in. Three balls and no strikes to Grandal, who takes a strike three and one. P.K. Hernandez waiting on deck. Sometimes they work a contact play where they take a chance on running on contact, get a good lead, get a good jump. It doesn't look like he's positioned. He's reading the ball, making sure it goes through right now. Ball four to Grandal. They're at first and third. The Grom has been in trouble since the jump tonight. Terry Collins on his way to the mound. Well, I think this is one case, guys, where Collins not only coming out to speak to DeGrom, but also coming out with Kike Hernandez coming up for first and third play with one out. That safety squeeze play that we've seen Joe Madden use for the Chicago Cubs where they scored two times in a game is on here for the Dodgers. It definitely could be used. Cubs scored on back-to-back -back at bats with that. Boy, that's something you usually don't see at this time of the year. That's, that was directly Ethier against the manager Mattingly. My guess would it be about not trying to get him over? That's the only thing I could think of. But maybe a comment was made and he reacted negatively to it. Well, at this time in game five, you got to kind of suck it up because it's you don't want any negativity on the bench for you or your teammates. One ball, no strikes to Hernandez. Runners lead from first and third. 
And he waves at it one and one. What do you suppose that was? I'm sure it was that. I'm sure at some point, you know, he probably went up and said, Andre, you got to try, you got to try to get him over there. And Andre didn't like it. He said, you go try to hit 97. Only problem is his manager at the same age probably could do it. <laughs> Right back to DeGrom. He's going to go to second for one to first. Double play. DeGrom gets out of a first and third situation. Throws a strike to second. Starts the double play. And it's still a 2 1 game. Hey, baseball fans, follow the postseason right from your phone with Team Stream by Bleacher Report. Get the latest MLB news, scores, and highlights all in the palm of your hand. Download Team Stream on the App Store or Google Play today. Top of the fourth. Rinky to Daniel Murphy swinging at the first pitch and a single to right. Murphy is two out of two. The official score did. Change the scoring on that play in the first inning instead of a triple. It's a double and an error on Kike Hernandez. Moments ago, Sam Ryan spoke with Dodgers manager Don Mattingly. Don Jacob throwing a lot of pitches in this one. What do you like about the approach at the plate? Well, he didn't seem quite as powerful today as, as the last time out. We've stayed with him. We've put guys in position. It'd been nice to have uh, cashed in a few more. Aside from those two hits in the first inning, what do you see from Zach? Zach seems sharp to me. It looks like he's locating the ball pretty well. The misses are barely missing. He's using his fastball. Uh, he looks good right now. Thanks a lot, Don. Here's Joanna Cespedes. Ball and no strike. So, Iron Man, your pregame. <laughs> Look at Daniel Murphy spot on <laughs> it's two out of two is knocked in the only Mets run Gonzalez has a hit too. Cespedes who struck out his first time waves at that a ball and a strike. Cespedes swing really seems like there's only one gear fifth gear. We heard Don Mattingly talk about. You know. Wish we had gotten more out of it. They've had nine at bats with runners in scoring position in the first three innings. Only those two runs to show for it. Still a one run game here as we play in the fourth. Shallow left center. Peterson on, makes the catch, and throws back to first, but a hair late. Peterson's got great speed in center field and tracked that one down. Well that's why Mattingly put him in the lineup. He said he wanted to put better defense in the outfield. And what a play. I thought I read his lips and said I didn't see it at first because it looked like he hesitated at first went up the air and then he really turned on the burners. And then had ideas for a double play. And that brings Lucas Duda to the plate and. Lucas has a record now that he wants no part of. Ten strikeouts, an NLDS record. He's two for 16 with those 10 Ks. Shift is on again. This time Turner playing in the hole between first baseman Gonzalez and second baseman Kendrick. He's Mr. Everyman on that diamond. Well, he's had he has played second base, so he could take the pivot if he needs to but you want your regular guys doing that it might be the only third baseman in divisional play that has played more on the right side of the diamond than the <laughs> left side of the diamond Murphy who singled to lead off the inning leads it first and Duda. What a swing and a miss. And his uniform's dirty, not because he's diving on defense, because he's stealing third base and he's on the bases all the time. On a bad knee.
Duda who hit 27 home runs and knocked in 73 runs in the regular season trying to break out here in this series against the Dodgers and takes down low two and one. Missed inside. They asked for help. Jim Wolf down there at third says he did not go, and the count's three and one. A nice high leg kick. He doesn't go. Ball's inside. That high leg kick, there's a timing on when to put that down. When he's putting it down in the right time, he's right on time, and he's streaky. When he's not, he's not. Down low and Duda's going to check again with Cedarstrom. Make sure that is ball four. They're at first and second. You know, here's an interesting stat. And look at Murphy taking third. That's because of the shift. No one got over the third base. Everyone on the right side, no one guarding third base, and Murphy takes advantage of it. How about this? So it's a walk. Now he takes it. He takes a look at who's there. And you see the third baseman is Justin Turner who's still on the right side. Nobody over there to cover. Heads up by Murphy. Murphy the wildest of Mets base runners makes it work. That's a big play. Surprised Grinky a little bit too because Grinky's very speedy. If he just saw him early enough he had a shot at him. Goes in the books as a stolen base. One of the few guys who can go first to third on a walk. Well, for all you analytics guys with the shift, everything went tilt right here. Grandal or the pitcher Granke has to cover third base. I don't think that just happens by chance. I think he's been thinking about it and he's been watching it. And if that opportunity came up, he was going to do just what he did. Travis Darno swings and fouls it away. Big stolen base to get the third with less than two out. What a division series we've postseason we've seen. First to third on a walk. Darno struck out his first time. One of six that Granky's fanned. In the air to right, Ethier over by the line. He makes the catch. Murphy will tag. And we are tied. And it's all because of Murphy and the heads up base running. That is manufacturing a run. Not in the conventional way. Well, that's just falling asleep at the wheel if you're the Dodgers. Watch Tim Tuffle, the third base coach, walk over, kicks the bag a little bit, rubs the dirt, and by the time he looks up, Murphy's on his way. Surprised even the third base coach. Here's Michael Conforto. That could have all been part of the deep though. He could have been playing into it. This could have been playing this for weeks. Just kidding by the way. <laughs> Conforto flied to right his first time. Ethier made a sliding catch. And of course he homered off Granky in game two. He's got to be looking for this uh, power change up. Maybe bring it up in the zone a little bit. That play has confused the crowd and taken some of the steam out of this crowd here. Conforto, whose mom was an Olympic 
athlete, synchronized swimming. His dad, a linebacker at Penn State. And he's two and two against Grinky here in the fourth. Well, he threw a fastball away by Conforto. Conforto's got tremendous power to left field, though, if he goes with that pitch again. Back to the overhand curveball. That was a lot of shaking off going on right there. Fastball away, change up, fastball in, slider away, slider in. Change the pitch, fastball away. On the ground. That'll be an easy play, and that'll do it for the Mets in the fourth. But they steal one to tie the game at two. Follow every pitch of the postseason with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, pitch tracking, live radio broadcasts, and more. Download the at bat app today. Jock Peterson leads it off in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Jacob DeGrom has pitched in trouble in every frame. He's thrown 60 pitches, but he finds himself in a tie game 2 2. He helped himself a lot on that uh, one six three double play didn't hesitate with the guy on third base who was strike the second got out of the inning. The 0 2. Mets with the shift giving Peters from the bunt put the ball too far inside. But very rare on two strikes. You square around early enough. That's when the. They go back and play your way back in the grass. There's an opportunity, but if you foul off that bunt, you strike out. Two balls and two strikes. Peterson walked to lead off the second. And he waits on a 2 2 here. And the count full. Peterson doesn't hold back. Tremendous bat speed. This could be fastball against a fastball hitter. Peterson works in for a walk to lead off the fourth. And we were talking about that heads up play that Murphy made. Our camera's catching this before as Duda was coming to the plate. Howie Kendrick telling Ricky, you're going to have to cover third. That's a hard call, though. You come in as the second baseman, you tell your pitcher five, six pitches later, he's walked the hitter. You're thinking about the hitter. You're not thinking about covering third base. That should have been the shortstop Seeger should have sprinted over as soon as the walk was called. Now, that wasn't for the walk. Yeah. That was for in case of stolen base. Because yeah. then you have a uh, covering second base. And then the ball coming down, no one's covering third. So that was a hedge against the stolen base. Frankie gets the runner over moments ago. Sam Ryan spoke with Mets manager Terry Collins. Terry, we saw Noah warming up in the bullpen. How short is the leash on Jacob? Well, he's really struggling with his command. And so we, you know, you can't fall too far behind with Granky on the mound. So we got Noah ready to go. And, you know, hopefully that, uh, you know, we can get through this next inning. And, uh, you know, he, we don't have to go to anybody else. But in this kind of a game, you've got to be ready for anything. You talked about scratching out runs against Granky. What can you say about the heads up play by Daniel? Well, it's a tremendous play. Dan's, Dan's a heads up base runner. You know, he's always looking to take an extra base. And, and that, there he got the opportunity. Thanks, Terry. Howie Kendrick takes a strike. It's 0-1. You know, it's interesting, Ronnie, when you talk about the communication on who should cover what. <laughs> when they first started doing the extreme shifts, you would get a situation like a stolen base. All of a sudden, he's safe at second base, and no one's covering third. All I have to do is beat the guy over to third base. So I think that was the communication 
in that sort of sense. And remember, you know, if we, if we got a stolen base here, you got to do this. On a walk, I don't think they've had to deal with it. In the postseason, also known as the Johnny Damon play. <laughs> In the air to center field. Plenty of room for Cespedes. Peterson will tag. Cespedes has a gun. And it's just a hair late. That was a great deke by David Wright at third. Just standing there basically with his hands at his sides. Ready to apply the tag. Well the deke right here is to kind of get him to lull him into a false sense of security that he doesn't have to slide. So slow down and stand up as if there's not a play there. Then you can catch the ball and tag. That was interesting, David Wright, at some point where Peterson lost his balance, almost gave a little nudge to try to get him off that bag. So Peterson at third with two down for Corey Seager. Singled and scored in the first, struck out in the second. Seager waiting on an 0 1. Talk about stress innings every single inning. DeGrom has got to get himself out of trouble. He was fooled there, and it's one and two. So, you know, the deke won't work here as long as you have the third base coach that's telling you what to do. See Ron Renneke <laughs> saying, get down, get down. That's who you need to be looking at if you're coming into third, not David Wright. Peterson down the line at third. Two and two. Seager scored a run in the first, looking for his first RBI of the series. Count is two and two, and we await the 75th pitch by Jacob DeGrom here in the bottom half of the fourth. Boy, Seager with two strikes seemed naturally like he can go the other way. That's that's good hitting here. A 2 2 change up. He barely fouls off. And then a 97 mile an hour fastball on the outside edge. He fouls off as well to keep himself alive. And Seeger fooled for strike three. Another threat by the Dodgers. But again, it goes by the boards. 2-2, heading to the fifth. <laughs> Wilmer Flores takes a strike as we move to the fifth. 2-2 Two -two game, game five. Winner gets the Cubs in the National League Championship Series. No balls and two strikes. Couldn't place those two pitches better than Greinke just threw those. Greinke has six strikeouts. What impeccable control, huh? 
two two four seamers on the outside edge and then entices you with a slider just a little bit off. Pretty good percentage right there. Yeah yeah pretty good. He puts you away when he gets ahead of you. Just too many weapons. Eight nine and one do for the Mets here in the fifth. Who scored first in this game and watch the Dodgers score two of their own in the first. And then heads up base running by Daniel Murphy. Going from first to third on a walk to Lucas Duda. As the Dodgers fell asleep at the switch. And he would score on a sacrifice fly. Well, that's where the power is for Wilmer Flores. He likes the ball middle of the plate in. And he had a better swing at that ball than he did on the pitches away. So he should go right back out of the way again. That's part of reading what happens on each pitch. Going back out, fastball in the outside corner. Strikeout number seven for Grinky. You know, Ronnie, we've talked about this winner take all winner scenario take here. Ball. And for the Mets, the last one was 2000. And six as they lost to the Cardinals in the National League Championship Series and. 1988. Was the last one for the Dodgers. And it was against your Mets and I and look I'm not trying to open up old wounds I know it was a tough thing <laughs> no but. But, um, but that's when the last one was for the Dodgers strike one to the ground. Well the last one for the Mets on the road too. And it was one of those games where I always swear. It's the only game I ever did before or after that game. Oral Hersheiser was so hot, he went 60 innings down the stretch without giving up a run. That before the game, I said to myself, you know what? Not on my watch. Oral's not going to have that kind of game. Well, it didn't work for me. I got knocked out in the second inning. Oral pitched a, a five hit shutout. He was outstanding. That's not staying in the moment. You're trying to think about other things than. Just the hitter that's at the plate. Look at that broken bat, a little blooper to third, and the barrel of the bat went into shallow right. That's getting in someone's kitchen right there. <laughs> Deep inside kitchen. That's Saxy to lead off the ball game. Well, that was even later in the game. Made a couple of errors early. But it didn't matter. Oral was fantastic. That series, he was fantastic in the postseason. And that game still haunts me to this day. Well, yeah. I mean, Ronnie, I know it's, and we've talked about it off the air before. Yeah. But I uh, appreciate you discussing it here in this setting when you're in a winner take all setting. Between the Dodgers and the Mets. Watch out what you wish for, right? We all want to be, have that putt in the U.S. Open. We all want to shoot that basket. We all want to pitch in a winner take all. Sometimes it doesn't work out for you. Granderson pops it up. That'd be an easy play in shallow left for Hernandez. And a 1 2 3 inning for Zach Brinke. All tied up, middle of the fifth. Our associate director, Billy Proctor, has it circled on the calendar every year. It's Chevy Truck Month. <laughs> Time to make a strong decision like choosing a Chevy Silverado. Chevrolet, proud to be the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Bottom half of the fifth. Winner moves on. Adrian Gonzalez leads it off against Jacob DeGrom and takes a strike 0 1. Gonzalez singled and scored in the first when the Dodgers got on the board with two. He struck out in the second.
interesting watching DeGrom, Cal. That ball down has a little more life. He has not found that pitch upstairs with the fastball for the strikeout yet. Good angle coming down. From someone that tall throwing a fastball down. Got a little extra hop to it. It's tough to catch up to. There it is. He blows away Gonzalez to start the fifth. Two low fastballs and then okay I'll go upstairs. What has Jeff Bannister told us from Texas this game has a cruel sense of humor. The Dodgers have had 10 at bats with runners in scoring position 11 at bats sorry with runners in scoring position. They've only produced two runs. They've had their chances against DeGrom and that at bat right there was the best series of pitches by DeGrom all all night long. Here's Turner who's two for two. With a single and a double and a stolen base. He's battled through the uh, early innings made some pitches to get out of trouble. Now he's even. Still in pretty good position to go this inning. One more and if it goes really fast maybe we can get into the seventh. Missed outside a ball and a strike. Yeah, the Dodgers have certainly had their chances. DeGrom has not had a one, two, three inning. To left center field. Will it stay? No, it's going to get past. From Forno and left. Well, for a second, that ball was going to stay up. And it went past Conforto and all the way to the wall. So he decides to go fastball in. Turner gets it, but he doesn't get all of it. And I'm not sure if he lost the ball in the lights. Here it is. Yes, he did lose it in the lights just for a second, or was trying to decide should he lay back? Or should he come and catch it? He decided on being aggressive and it cost him. From the first angle, it seemed like he was tracking it and then he hesitated for a minute, to, which might be one of those plays that you lose at that angle in the lights. Well, Turner's out there at second with one away. Here's Ethier. Hits. Ethier knocked in a run his first time and then flying to left in the third. I'll tell you the intensity got it has to be ratcheted up six doubles which is a division series record for Justin Turner after that argument with Mattingly on the bench. Well of course this isn't the same situation you got a guy on second with one out. You're not going to try to move the runner. You're going to try to drive him in. And we're still guessing whether that was uh, what the argument was all about. Dodgers 0 for their last nine with runners in scoring position. Turner's out there for Ethier. And DeGrom is going to look him back. Well, the least thing DeGrom can do is just vary his looks. Don't get into a pattern where you look once, look back to home plate, hesitate, then go home. Well, when he stole third base before, Flores had put the daylight or pickoff play on, and they had Turner. Straight outside, two and one. And many times, if you're playing behind him, you start to see and get a sense he's timing the pitcher. And if the noise is so loud, you can't get his attention. Huge lead by Turner. He stole third after his double in the third. Flores behind him. Breaking pitch. Strike call two and two.
with first base open had the luxury to try to throw a curveball on a 2 1 count. Got it over, got a second strike. The ground again, bluffing Turner back. And even if you don't think he's going to steal, the bluff works because it gets the base runner a little closer. It gives your outfielders a chance at a play at home if there's a base hit. 86 pitches for DeGrom as we play here in the bottom of the fifth. Fouled off at the plate, just did stay alive. I really like that curveball, especially the lefty from, from DeGrom. Because it's a change of speed and a big break. That slider that we saw in the first inning is not so much a change of speed and a smaller break. And when it stays over the plate to a lefty, as we saw in Gonzalez, they can put a charge into it. You saw Noah Syndergaard loosening in the Mets pen. He was the game two starter here in Los Angeles. Two balls, two strikes. Popped up. Flores calling. Two down. So Noah Syndergaard has gone from a starter who's never relieved to a guy now that has gotten up for the second time. Well, if you are a starter and you're down there and you get hot, you get warm. Can you start to simulate what it would be like to be in a game as a starter? Sit down a little bit, then get back up again? Very difficult to do at 23 years old. But the power arm is intoxicating to a manager. Yeah, but at 23, you never get <laughs> um, sore or you're always loose. Here's Yasmani Grandal. Struck out his first time. Walked in the third. Once again, the Dodgers with traffic against DeGrom, but they've only been able to score two runs, both in the first. Ninety pitches now for DeGrom, most of them from the stretch. Look out, look out. Flores snuck in behind Turner. Are you telling Turner, look out? <laughs> you sound Tell like the, the fans, third base look coach. Out. You may see something here. Oh, I see. <laughs> you weren't saying back. Get back. <laughs> Breaking pitch over. A ball and two strikes. That's a good hammer right there. Interesting that Grandall now has questioned a couple of calls from Cedarstrom. Usually don't see that from the opposing catcher. He wants his pitcher to get the same pitch. Steer right three called. And the ground. Again, pitches out of trouble. Five innings in the books in game five, all time. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. We are zipping right along. Top half of the sixth in game five. All tied up at two. David Wright leads it off against Zach Crinky and takes a strike 0 and 1. Wright has struck out in both trips. At times, Crinky looks like it's a yo yo. He's got it at the end of a string. His control is so precise. In the air, into right. Ethier right near the line makes the play one down by my count seven strikeouts aside tonight which puts us at 103 in the series with the two teams combined the 
And here's Daniel Murphy. Here's the guy that Cal spotlighted as a guy who could make a difference for the Mets in this decisive game five. All he's done is double in the first, knocking in a run, singled in the fourth, and as Lucas Duda draw, uh, drew a walk, went from first to third as the Dodgers were in a shift and nobody covered third. And then he was able to score on a sacrifice fly to tie the game. One ball, no strikes. He set it up nicely, too, by kind of just walking to second base. And as soon as he got near second base, that's when he turned it on. That reminds me, my dad tried to teach me how to do that on a walk and try to steal second. And he used the technique being the same way. You run down there at a decent pace, but you run a little slow, and then you take a peek at where the middle infielders are. They turn their back on you, then take off. I was too chicken to ever try. <laughs> I was going to say, did you ever pull it off? <laughs> No, I wasn't known for the stolen base. See that once he took a peek and that Greinke wasn't going over there, he took the base easily. What a heads-up play by Murph. Two balls, one strike. And that stays downstairs. Three and one. Joanna Cespedes waiting on deck. Murphy has not bitten on that change up down. He's been able to make Greinke get the ball up in the strike zone. No one on base pitching from the stretch is Greinke right now. Line foul. Three balls and two strikes. Murphy batting with one out here in the sixth. Dramatic game fives in the American League on Wednesday and a great one going here on Thursday night at Chavez Ravine. It's almost like Frankie's giving him another look by pitching in the stretch. The three two is driven to right. That ball is gone. Daniel Murphy has broken the tie here in the sixth. It is three two Mets. Silence to Chavez Ravine. It brings Bedlam to McFadden's in New York. And a no doubter. In this series, every time Murphy's got a pitch to hit, he has not missed it. He tried to come in with a fastball. Remember the first time up here to change up to left center field. So when the count went to three and two right there, he was going fastball in and didn't quite get it in. I just found it amazing because he had two hits off Granke that on a three two count. Greinke decided to go out of the stretch just to give him a different look. It didn't work. Murphy now with three home runs in the series. Two off Kershaw. One off Greinke. I don't think I've ever seen that really. Going into the stretch just to give a different look. <laughs> Never seen it. I've seen quick pitching and then going faster out of your wind up. But just going into a stretch. Just to make it look a little different. He's back in the windup right now. A strikeout and a flyout for Cespedes. And a dribbler up the line. Foul. And of course, if you're having control problems, I've seen that. Yeah. You know, you try to minimize the moving parts, go into the stretch. But usually not within the at bat. But Grinky doesn't have any control problems. Well, we're in Los Angeles. The free agent to be Murphy. What an audition. Been with the Mets his entire career. Signed in the year they last made the postseason. And Cespedes 
Goes down swinging. Let's get our stat cast numbers here on the solo homer by Daniel Murphy. The exit velocity of a shade over 107. Just amazing. A, a, when you look at Murphy's career, he's not considered a home run hitter. Yes, he did hit his career high this year with 14. And he's been unconscious in this series. Lucas Duda. 1 0. Oh. Struck out in the first, walked in the fourth. Grandall now talking to Cedarstrom about that first pitch to Duda. Missed again, 2 0. Oh. That whole play by Murph and going from first to third on the walk just changed the whole momentum of this game. It looked like Grinky was going to protect the lead, and Murphy changed that. Put himself in position where a fly ball would score him, and Travis Darno did just that with the sacrifice fly. Murphy scored to tie it and then broke the tie here in the sixth. Dudas, he's still feel, he's still feeling for the ball. 2-0 got a, a change up. He took it, and then a fastball up. They didn't quite get back to. The 2-2 two -two. popped up, out of play, and we'll do it again. Unlike Adrian Gonzalez, it's not like they've pitched due to completely tough. He's had a half dozen pitches to hit. He has just missed them. That was one of them. And he knew it. The 11th time he has struck out in the series. He adds to that record he wants no part of. Seven, eight, nine due for the Dodgers here in the sixth. And Kike Hernandez with a swing and a miss against Jacob DeGrom. During the regular season, DeGrom's ERA in a shutdown inning was 1.72, but he was given the lead in the first inning tonight in the post and gave two back. On the ground to second Murphy. One down. This has been, as you look at Chris Hatcher warming up for the Dodgers, this has been nothing like the dominating DeGrom we saw in game one. But it has been a very tough Jacob DeGrom pitching in and out of trouble and allowing just those two first inning runs. Well, it's a gutsy DeGrom, I'll tell you that. It's not real measurement of any pitcher. When you have your great stuff and you cruise through a lineup, you don't judge a pitcher. You judge when he doesn't have his best stuff, how he stays in there, keeps his team in the game. Now he's got a lead. Here's Jock Peterson. Takes a strike. He's really found that curveball. He's throwing it for strikes. He's getting people out in front of it. Dropped his changeup in. He's, even though he has that stuff with the upper 90s fastball. It's his secondary pitches that are keeping him in. There's another change up right there. Peterson has drawn a couple of walks tonight. Zach Grinky is in the on deck circle. The 
DeGrom only walked one in seven innings of work in the opener. He's walked three here tonight. Peterson twice. Big cut. Nothing to show for it. Two and two. Curveball, two changeups followed up with a 95 mile an hour fastball. But Peterson's not your typical eighth place hitter. I don't care where he's hitting. When a guy has pop in his rookie season, goes deep 26 times, you always have to be careful. Two balls, two strikes. Way upstairs. And the count full. Pitch number 101 is popped up. And David Wright squeezes it for out number two. So in my scorebook, that's a fly ball to five. Even though he caught it over there around yeah, second base. I know, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. Doesn't feel right. You have to make a little notation in, in your scorebook. All right. Well, two down and nobody on and Grinky. Will bad here in the sixth. There's a first pitch slider. Grinky's only hitting because the first two guys made an out. They both got on. He would have bunted. In the air, foul territory and out of play. And the count 0 2. Well, no one on in this inning for DeGrom, but 57 of his 103 pitches tonight have been with men in scoring position. That's how hard it's been for DeGrom. That's what they call stressful pitches, then, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. There was a time earlier in this game you had to wonder would he get to this point. Getting to the bottom of the sixth inning. To the gap in right center field. Granderson with a long run but he makes the play. And that is the first one two three inning for Jacob DeGrom. Six in the books. One run game. Tonight's upcoming schedule brought to you by DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Here's the way the NLCS shakes out. Game one will be Saturday. Still don't know where that will be, but one of the two teams you're watching tonight will host it against the Chicago Cubs. As you take a look at the schedule for that best of seven. Top half of the seventh here in game five. First ever series matching up teams that were no hit twice in the regular season. Dodgers were no hit by Mike Fires and Jake Arietta. Followed back by Travis Darno. In about the third row behind the plate. The Mets were no hit by Chris Heston of the Giants and then Max Scherzer late in the year. Saw Avalon and Hatcher loosening in the Dodger pen, and there is Noah Syndergaard. So he's might have thrown a complete game down the pen. <laughs> yes, he has. Darno struck out in the second, and it was his sacrifice fly after the hustle play by Daniel Murphy that brought the Mets second baseman home with a sacrifice fly to tie the game. Murphy later untied it with a home run off the end of the bat to Gonzalez with the flip to Grinky one down. Official caps hoodies jackets and more celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. That's almost clinical with Gonzalez and Grinky 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 covering first base he makes it look so easy he gets over there so easy that's a. 
fundamental play. Well, he makes it easy for the first baseman. He doesn't have to time it with pitchers that are slower or don't get off the mound quickly. Three infielders on the right side against Michael Conforto. He bats with one down here in the seventh. There's the shift with uh, Turner actually playing up the middle this time. Right back to Grinky. Two down. The line on Grinky with his nine strikeouts and one walk as he tries to wrap up the top half of the seventh inning. Right back at him and into center field. And that is going to end the night for Jacob DeGrom with a runner at first and two down. Terry Collins will pinch hit for him with Kelly Johnson. And handshakes all around for DeGrom. It's a gutsy performance from DeGrom. Kelly Johnson has been a huge part of this team since coming over in late July. One of those great guys off the bench and Noah Syndergaard is going to make his first relief appearance. Rick Honeycutt will have a word with Grinky. That was guts. Like he's disappointed he didn't get the swing. 57 of those 105 pitches with men in scoring position. Stress all night. But only allows those two first inning runs. Now Flores makes an out. He's still in the game. Two outs are gone first. He's not. The veteran Kelly Johnson, who made a tour of the American League East from 12 through 14, played for everybody in that division, began this season in Atlanta. Came to the Mets with Juan Uribe in a July deal. Uribe, the former Dodger, Was productive with the Mets, but then suffered a chest injury and not on the roster here in the division series. Two balls and no strikes to Kelly Johnson. Battery mates shaking hands, almost like, thanks for helping me get through that. When Johnson came to the Mets, he made his debut July 25th and homered against the Dodgers in a 15 to 2 win. And he takes a strike, 2 and 1. On the ground, loved by Kendrick, but he cannot make a play. Got some leather on it, but they're at first and second. Just a ball out of the reach of Howie Kendrick's backhand. Gets the glove on it, kind of sticks in the end of the glove for a second, and then falls out. No chance. Not enough of it. 
to keep Flores from moving to third. And Don Mattingly makes his way to the mound. Zach Grinke leads to a standing ovation. He also leads with the Dodgers down as Luis Avalon comes out of the Dodger pen. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. The night over for Zach Greinke. After six and two-thirds, he leaves with runners at first and second. And 103 pitches in the books, and Luis Avalon takes over. He worked an inning in game three when the Mets blew him out at City Field, struck out a couple of, in an inning of work. First, Greinke opted out in his contract, might exercise that. Could have been his last start in the Dodge uniform. Avilano came over from the Braves. Good fastball, good changeup, and breaking ball. Going up against Curtis Granderson, his five RBIs have all been off left handed pitchers, Brett Anderson and J.P. Howell in game three. Huge moment for the Mets trying to add on as they lead 3 2. Granderson singled and scored the first Mets run. That came in the first. Rounded out in the third. Flied out in the fifth. Granderson's done a nice job all season long against left handed pitching, using that left side of the diamond because of the shift. Pretty nimble down there. Tom Goodwin, the first base coach, leaping out of the way. Say you can't outrun a baseball. He almost was able to. 300, 369 steals in his career, including four of home. <laughs> Changeup is his go-to pitch for Avilan for strikeouts. Flores and Kelly Johnson are your runners. The one-one. Fouled off right back at the Mets dugout. Good sinking action with that 95. Running in on Curtis Granderson. Granderson, good hitter with two strikes. Six for ten in this series. He's behind one ball and two strikes against Avalon. It's almost like Avalon's pitching to the shift, making sure he crowds Granderson so he can't go the other way. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. Mm. High and tight. Two and two. I think that was a breaking ball that didn't break. It's supposed to be a hard slider and backed up on him. I was thinking the same thing until I saw the 93. In the air to left. Hernandez back. And he's got it at the edge of the track. The Mets chase Grinky, but do not score. Time to stretch in LA. Middle of the seventh here at Dodger Stadium. Let's go inside the booth presented by Insurance, proud partner of Major League Baseball. Ernie Johnson, Ron Darling, Cal Ripken, Noah Syndergaard. He hasn't done this. He's coming out of the pen in game five. You know what's interesting? We went and talked to Terry Collins before the game. The first question he asked, do you think Noah Syndergaard could go in the bullpen and pitch tonight? I said, it's a difficult thing to ask someone who's never done it before. Not only is he doing it, 
but he's warmed up three different times before coming in this game. And watching him warm up now, he's been pitching out of the stretch. He's going to pitch out of the stretch to start the inning. From a hitter's perspective, it would make me feel a little uncomfortable. You're used to facing different guys out of the pen, and all of a sudden, now you're facing a starter and a 100 mile an hour fastball. Let me take that back. He went back to the windup, but most of his pitches were in the stretch in between innings. He's facing the top of the Dodger order. And threw a strike at 100 to Howie Kendrick, who bounces this one right back to Syndergaard. One down. So Syndergaard on the pitch. Juan Lagares, who won a gold glove last year, is into center field, and Cespedes, who started in center, moves to left. Here's Corey Seager. Not only does he have 100, he's got 84. Nice hook right there. <laughs> Seager was cheating a little bit, looking for the 100, trying to get the bat head out on it. He went off speed, breaking pitch again. 0 and 2. Just so difficult if you're a hitter, you're looking for 100 plus, and you get two breaking balls. He said, if you were looking for that, here it is, 100, but he missed. Jonathan Neese is the left hander, Tyler Clifford the righty. And Chris Hatcher. He's had a good series. Getting loose in the Dodger pen. He blows away Seeger at 99 for the second out. Look at the upcoming postseason schedule. Fox has the Blue Jays and Royals tomorrow night. FS1's got them on Saturday afternoon. They got game one of the National League Championship Series on Saturday night here on TBS. Well, here's Adrian Gonzalez. With two down, nobody on in the bottom half of the seventh. So the Mets have spent an entire summer trying to take care of their young pitchers, give them time off to rest. They've gotten in, the, in this winner take all game completely unfettered. Go get them, kids. Anxious moments on both sides in a decisive game five, and that missed two and one. Well, Noah's coming out, mixing in some breaking balls with his 100 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, power arms play. Power arms play in the starting rotation. They particularly <laughs> play well out of the bullpen. That's that two seamer he learned early in the season from Dan Worth. And ball starts on the outside corner, ends up six inches away. As Danny. Check the swing. It makes you get jumpy. You realize you got to get out there. You got to be able to hit it. You saw Corey Seeger try to go out there. And was fooled by the breaking ball. You don't want to be jumpy as a hitter. But velocity makes you a little bit jumpy. The tying run is on here in the seventh. And here is Justin Turner. Mets have not been able to deal with him not only in game five but most of this series.
single and a couple of doubles. And he bats with Gonzalez at first and two out in the seventh. Well, this is a new situation for Syndergaard. This season did pitch a little relief in A-ball back in 2012. There's nothing about this situation that smells anything like A-ball. <laughs> <laughs> Turner had a pretty good swing at that first fastball. He's behind 0 and 2. Fouls that one straight back. And sometimes for a pitcher, that's hard to read. Was he on it? Was he a little bit late? Looked to me like he was a little bit late on that fastball. With his 3 for 3 tonight, he's 10 for 18 in the series. And he's knocked in one of the two Dodger runs in this one. They both came in the first. Gonzalez with a lead at first. Syndergaard with the 0-2. Turner battles him. Turner hit that one out of Darno's glove. That's what happens when you face 100. Then in the back of your mind, you know he's got that hook too. You got to cover all the pitches with two strikes. Here comes the curveball. And he got him. Noah Syndergaard coming out of the pen. Strikes out two. The Mets maintain the 3 2 lead. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. So glad you're with us tonight here on TBS. Game five. Mets and Dodgers. And we move to the eighth in a one-run game. Chris Hatcher has come out of the Dodger bullpen. He's their third pitcher of the night. Well, Hatcher has been great in this series. A former catcher turned pitcher, hard thrower, but good changeup and breaking ball also. We'll use all three. He will face David Wright to lead it off in the eighth. Soft liner right to Howie Kendrick. One down. Now here is Daniel Murphy. And this is what he did in the sixth inning to break a 2 2 tie. But it was his double in the first that got the Mets on the board. And it was heads up base running in the fourth that led to the second run that tied the game after the Dodgers had taken a 2 1 lead. What a graphic there. No one ever in the postseason has hit for the cycle. Murphy a triple away. The 0 1. Count even. David Wright made it out in the first pitch. I think Murphy went up there thinking he had to take a strike. Now back even in the count one and one. On the ground to second. Kendrick throws him out. So, you, you know, he, he sort of hit for the cycle tonight. <laughs> it was originally a triple. Then it was changed to a double and an error. <laughs> Here with his single and his home run. So could he get a triple and a double in the same no. play? <laughs> I was just, right. just kidding, Iron. All right. <laughs> Here's Cespedes. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Grinky handled him really well tonight. He's been chasing the low breaking ball. 
when he needed to strike out with a guy on third, he went upstairs with a fastball. Jairis Familia is the Mets closer. I think we're going to bring him in for a full full inning, full six out save. What do you do right there, Ronnie? You got it's, it was an impressive, an impressive inning for Syndergaard. Boy, it's, it's hard to take him out, isn't it? After I'd be that really inning, tempted. yeah, send him back out there. He gets in trouble. You have Familia to bail him out. And you got a chance of him having a really good eighth inning as well. Maybe warming up the three times is keeping him, precluding him from pitching the eighth. What do you think, Ronnie? Is he still in the game? Boy, it's uh, usually pitchers if they're still in the game are sitting down yeah, it looks in like between it, innings. It looks like his posture is he's been told he's out of the game. Hatcher took a while. Suspidus stepped out. As we await a 1 2 pitch with two out here in the eighth. The two out Suspidus trying to do one thing hit this ball out of the ballpark. He's done it six times with this count. That stayed upstairs, two and two. Mets fans counting outs right now. Six outs away. Cespedes goes down swinging. And we head to the middle of the eighth. Game five. Three two New York. Stay tuned after the game for the postseason show on TBS presented by the Lincoln Motor Company. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Dodgers down one. The Mets turn to their closer here in the eighth. And he's been untouchable in this series, Ronnie. He's gotten 10 outs in this series. He's given up no hits. He's asked to get 16 now. Go two innings for a six out save. Never been asked that before his entire career. Four out saves, he's had three. Five out saves, he's had three. We've already seen a Mets pitcher go into uncharted territory and Syndergaard coming out of the New York pen. And here's Familia. Right back to him. One down. Cal, that's one of the parts of the game that's kind of changed a little from our day. If you're down a run and you were leading off an inning, you probably take a pitch because you need a base runner. But if you're figuring that Familia is so tough, you can't give up a strike. Yeah, unless you're a power guy, yeah. you can tie the game with one swing of the bat. Ethier can, and you know when you're facing a closer, you don't want to give him that first pitch. Normally, that's the best pitch that you're going to get to hit. Here's Carl Crawford, who started the first three games of the series, but has gone just one for 11 at the plate. He pinch hits for Grandal. And he takes outside 1 0. I would think, from a pitcher's perspective, you, you know, you get that out, that quick, easy out right back oh. to you. Not a lot of stress on the first pitch. A ball and a strike. Kenley Jansen loosening in the Dodger pin. Well, that's what the playoffs are all about extending your roles. The closer is not just three outs anymore, he's six. <laughs> to left, Cespedes tracks it down. 
A good swing by Crawford there. A little more speed in left field. Seems like Cespedes was frozen as soon as that ball came to him. But he had enough speed and guile to react and make that play. So Jimmy Rollins has a bat. And he will pinch hit for Kike Hernandez. Well, because of what has happened in this series, you really can't envision this game ending without Rollins and Utley getting in a bat at some point in this game. Rollins is first. Familia has retired the first two here in the eighth on four pitches. And he throws a strike to Rollins. 97 miles an hour with nasty sink on it from Familia. Rollins has played in three games of this series, one start. One for six at the plate with a couple of strikeouts. And he's 0 for 5 in his career against Familia. With those five at bats, he's also got three walks. And the walk in a stolen base plays. The 2 1. That missed. Three balls and a strike. Jock Peterson waiting on deck. Rollins trying to reach, get the tying run aboard here in the eighth. To first. Nice play, Duda. He's going to take it himself. And that is a 1-2-3 inning for Familia. The New York Mets, three outs away from the NLCS. We'll be back. Let's take a look at tonight's forecast presented by FanDuel. Home field advantage for game five. Not exactly. Shocking number. And the home standing Dodgers trail as we go to the ninth. Well, both sides are being asked to do things they haven't been, able, been doing before. Kelly Jansen would never in the regular season come in a game where the Dodgers are losing by a run, but they've got to keep the Mets at a one run deficit. Carl Crawford, who pinch hit in the eighth, stays in the game and left, replacing Kike Hernandez. And Kenley Jansen throws a strike to Lucas Duda. A.J. Ellis is the new catcher after Grandal was pinch hit for in the eighth. Boy, I'd be tempted if I was Duda struggling this bad to bunt for a base hit. Too late now. We saw Jock Peterson square around with two strikes. Two different players. Two strikeouts and a walk for Duda. Who's two for 17 in this series. An uneasy feeling here in Chavez Ravine. Dodgers down one. Mets hoping to add on here in the ninth. Popped him up. Seeger, the only Dodger on that side of the infield, squeezes it for the first out. Seven. 
Travis Darnell. Well, the anticipation over in that New York dugout. Everyone on the top railing. And on the other side, some dejection. Here's Darno. Breaking pitch stayed high. It was Darno who hit the sacrifice fly in the fourth inning that scored Daniel Murphy. It was a huge moment in this game, folks. Because Murphy with a heads up play while a base runner at first went first to third on Duda's walk when nobody covered third. Fouled off in front of the dugout. Gonzalez two out. So Murphy went first to third on the walk then scored on the Darno sacrifice fly that tied the game at two and Murphy later homered with nobody on to break the tie that came in the sixth and now we're in the ninth and one Lagaris will bat for the first time tonight. In 2006, Mets beat the Dodgers. Three game sweep. This one going the distance. And they lead by one in the ninth. Lagar is waiting on a 1 0 from Kenley Jansen. That's over, a ball and a strike. Coming into this series, a lot of the talk was facing Kershaw and Granke twice in the series. It might be facing DeGrom and Syndergaard twice might be the difference. Missed inside two and one. In the Dodger ninth. Jock Peterson the number eight hitter. And the pitcher spot. In the top of the order. Two and two. Two good high strikes. Garris thought he was trying to get him, get him to bring it down. While Peterson will lead off, A.J. Ellis in the pitcher's spot would hit second in the ninth, and then Kendrick at the top of the order. Magic Johnson. One guy who will always hold out hope no matter what the situation. On the ground. That is a fair ball. That's going to be extra bases for Ligaris. He stands at second with two outs here in the ninth. Let's stop number four. Miller Flores. The ball right over the bag. Not much of a chance. Hit really hard. Karam's off of here. No chance to stop the double. He got one down where he could handle it. He didn't want to swing at the high strikes. Let me get one down where I can get the barrel to it. He's just let AJ Ellis is going out to tell Jensen, hey, listen, Flores is up, but Familia, the closer, is on deck. What the Dodgers would do right here just walk them and face familiar. Relievers never get any 
at bats during the season, and they are going to do that. Yep. No sense in risking because sometimes you say let's pitch around him. Let's not give him something to hit. Take a chance at it. But here is pretty clear. Put him on. Pitch to the pitcher. And Familia doesn't it doesn't have an opportunity to get too many at bats in his role. No scouting report on Familia, so we won't bother giving you one. <laughs> that ball's a little close to home plate. Yeah. So they're at first and second. Familia has not been to the plate in 15 two for four in his career. He probably dreamed going into this game of getting the last out. At Dodger Stadium in game five this is probably not part of the dream but he's at the plate two on two out. Well, he swings like he throws hard. Closer versus closer in this matchup in the ninth. And the count even a ball and a strike. Duda and Darno popped out to start the inning. Lagaris with a double. Flores intentionally walked. Struck him out. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Dodgers need one to tie, two to win. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T Mobile. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. It's game five and the Mets lead it three to two. We haven't seen Chase Utley since game two. He was the focal point of this series after the collision that broke the leg of Ruben Tejada. He was suspended for two games, appealed it. The appeal won't be heard till Monday. He didn't play in games three or four in New York. He pinch hits here in the bottom of the ninth with the Dodgers down one. He's three out of his last three against Familia. And there's strike one. A ball and a strike. The Utley Utley chant here not exactly the same as not exactly the same tone as it was said in New York. In the air toward the line and out of play. He's a ball on two strikes. Saw familiar there quick pitch Utley. He will do that occasionally. Familia started this season as the setup man for Henry Mejia, who was then suspended, and the job became Familia's. He has run with it. In the air to right field, Curtis Granderson, one down. And 
Starts him out with a good hard sinker, 97. Just missed inside. Quick pitched him, which surprised Utley, and then came back with a split finger. That one was hanging in the middle of the plate. Hit right on the nose by Utley. Put the first out. It's always a battle. If you're behind and you get that first runner on, it changes everything. If you're pitching and you get that first out, it puts you in the driver's seat. Here's A.J. Ellis. His first at bat of the night. After Grandal was the starter and was pinch hit for. He's got the Dodger franchise record with a 12 game postseason hitting streak and they need one here. One and one. Familia lives on the bottom of that strike zone. One ball, two strikes. You gotta be ready if you're Ellis here. It might be a quick pitch might come and play. The last Mets pitcher with a postseason save of at least two innings. Jesse Orozco back in 86. Familia trying to get that done here in game five of the NLDS. It's two and two. Howie Kendrick waiting on deck. Strike three to Ellis and the Mets are an out away. Nasty slider from Familia. That was only a only for the World Series win by J.O. Jesse Orozco. Kendrick is 0 for 4. Reached on an error in the second. Made up his mind he was going to sit on that fastball. The slider in the dirt. He was already committed. There is strike away. Familia to the plate. And he struck him out. And the New York Mets have won the series. And they will meet the Chicago Cubs in the National League Championship Series. The Mets come to L.A. and beat the Dodgers to win the series. You thought that the Dodgers, after Clayton Kershaw won game four, got the ball back to Zach Greinke in game five here at Chavez Ravine. They were set up perfectly. But Daniel Murphy made sure that did not happen. Nice job, boy. Jacob DeGrom with six gutsy innings. Syndergaard pitching a relief for the first time in the major leagues. And Familia coming in for six big outs. Whoa. And there is Terry Collins. Sportsmanship here. Like to see it. Oh, that's a great moment right there. Mattingly and Collins. 1,688 games managed. Never been to the postseason. And here now the totals for tonight's game. For the Nets, Terry the Collins. Lost his father, Bud, at 95 this year. Said he thought about him on the day the Mets clinched the division. And I'm sure 
It's uh, been in his mind now, too, as they advance to the National League Championship Series. Had to be a time in Terry Khan's life when he felt like he would never get to the postseason. He'd never get another job managing. He's managed some Mets teams that have been awful the last few years. He was asked the other day about the sense of urgency to win the series. He said, yeah, there's a sense of urgency. I'm 66. <laughs> Jay Reese Familia retired all 16 batters he faced in this series. Let's go down to Sam Ryan. Sammy. Terry, your first time here to the postseason, now to the NLCS. You knew this would be a hard-fought one. Tensions were high from the beginning of this one. What can you say about the fight in this team? Tremendous fight, Sam. You know, you, you've heard it all along. We, we have a tough game. We, something doesn't go right, and we bounce back. We've done it all year long. And, and tremendous heart. I mean, there's nothing else to say. These guys are, we got some young guys and some veteran guys. They've meshed together, and it's been a blast. On a night when Jacob doesn't have his best stuff, but would got, get those hard fought outs for you, what can you say about his heart? Well, he, he's going to be great. I'm telling you, he's going to be a great pitcher. You know, the nights you don't have your best stuff and you can still go out and pitch like that and, and work and work and be in trouble with pretty much the whole game. But that big guy out of that bullpen was pretty impressive, too, I'll tell you. Noah Syndergaard, I know you were going over the lineup and questioning yourself going into this one. How much pride do you have for yourself right now in the job that you did? <laughs> Sam, it's played by those guys. It's played by the players. And you know what? It's just an honor to be around them. And you, you, I, I try to stay out of the way as best I can. Congratulations. Thank Enjoy so this. Much. Thank you so much. Guys. Wow. What a night for the Mets, who allowed those two runs in the first inning to the Dodgers to erase a 1-0 lead, but then the Dodgers go 0 for their last 11 with runners in scoring position. They had opportunities, but could not cash in. You see some Mets fans who are here. They are shouting at their heroes as they come off the field. Worth the trip. And look at Terry Collins. You know, he was humble saying that uh, it's the players, but he's he showed good leadership and bringing uh, in Syndergaard from the bullpen was a gutsy move, having never done it before. And it was the right bridge to get to Familia. Daniel Murphy, what a night he had, and he's with Sam. Daniel, before the game, we were talking. You were calm. You said <laughs> a lot was, of people were nervous. That was the Holy Spirit. That was Jesus. That was the only thing that kept me calm. But you kept going from the first, getting Granderson in, and then the stolen base in the fourth and the home run. Tell me the thought process on the stolen base. Um, you know, Lucas really works a great A-B because, you know, Zach right there, 3-1, 3-2, he can go in so many different places. And to win that right there, I, I, you know, I'm here at first, and I'm just trying to casually walk into second and hoping that nobody called time because I look like an idiot if somebody calls time. <laughs> and I run to third. and. And it just happened to, you know, I saw it, and I think, I'm not sure who was supposed to cover it, but there was nobody there. And I'm not the fleetest of foot, but just fast enough for that one. Cranky was pitching his heart out tonight. He threw but the you, ball really well. You connected on the home run. What'd you see there? Um, man, we, we went back and forth that hole at bat. Um, you know, he threw the ball so well. He's got such a great change up. He locates so well. And, you know, I get 3-2 right there. And I finally get a heater kind of in the zone. I've been looking in all night. It was the middle end, and, you know, I'm able to keep it fair. Um, what a job Jacob DeGrom did tonight. You know, that first inning, they put two on him, and it definitely could have got away from him. He goes six, gives it over to Syndergaard, who was throwing 1,000, it felt like, and then Urias goes six out save um, and 20 pitches. What a team win. I feel like everybody got a piece of this one. First time Noah out of the bullpen. Familia's been doing it for you all year. You can exhale. You're going to the NLCS. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is fun. This is fun. I want to go party with you. Back to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Daniel Murphy jumping for joy on his way back to the dugout, and he sees those Mets fans. They're going to take on the Cubs. It'll be the first time they've ever met in the postseason. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the Dodgers. Great season, good team, great players. This is just a cruel game. Zach Granke. First time all season. 
He's given up a lead. Final score, Mets three, Dodgers two. For Ron Darling, Cal Ripken, Sam Ryan, and the rest of the crew, this is Ernie Johnson saying good night from Los Angeles. TBS is your home for the National League postseason. Following a quick break, stay tuned for the postseason show on TBS presented by the Lincoln Motor Company. It'll be the Cubs and the Mets. Game one, City Field, Saturday. Be there.